watching. Dante's watching nature. Keep watching. Otherwise. Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to Dante's Moxon Nation Show here on AllTalkRadio.net. Now here's your host, Dante. What's going on, guys? BoxingTalk.com, AllTalkRadio.net, and welcome to the Dante's Boxing Nation Show. I am your host, Dante, and joining me today are my two special guests. This man right here, by way of phone, has one of the best boxing channels on YouTube. You guys can subscribe to Ranger on Raw Boxing TV on YouTube. And in the studio with me, I have one of the fastest growing sports and entertainment promoters right now. This man right here, he's here to promote his undefeated prospect, Chewy Gutierrez, who's going to be fighting on um, the Javier Fatuna versus Rodriguez undercard. And he's going to give us more information on that. Mr. Tawan Butler. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, Dante? Hey, what's going on, guys? Oh, Welcome man. to the show. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you very for having much. me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad both of you guys made it. Now, I just want to let my viewers this. know we got a whole lot to talk about before we start talking. Later on, we're going to talk about the Stavern versus Ariola fight. We're going to talk about Laura versus Canelo, Gamboa versus Terrence Crawford. And since we have a promoter in the studio with us, we're going to talk a lot about the promotional beefs between Oscar versus Richard Schaefer. Uh, Golden Boy versus Top Rank, and even a little bit about 50 Cent's promotions, all right? So let's go ahead and get it in. Let me go ahead and uh, start with you, uh, Tawan. Now, Tawan, now, I understand that you're also, you also have a barbershop out here in Vegas. Yeah. Now, right hook, now, right Hook Promotions has been very successful. How did you make the transition from barber to a boxing and a sports and entertainment promoter? Well, you know, even to be a barber, you got to be in touch with the people. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And I've been a successful <laughs> barber for the last 16 years. So to shake hands and kiss babies to keep your people coming back, <laughs> it ain't nothing but, you know, good business. Everybody support what you got going on. So it was a real easy transition for me, real easy. Yeah, that's what's up. So you did it pretty natural, huh? Yeah, real, real, it was natural. It was just waking up and going to the bathroom. You know, it's natural. <laughs> it's natural. It just happens like that. Just another barbecue. I, that's I heard it. that. That's it. I heard that. Now go ahead and um, tell us a little bit about um, your fighter. I mean, this dude, another dude that's blowing up in Las Vegas. This yeah. dude got the largest entourage. He's fought, <laughs> he done fought on ESPN. Yeah. And you, go ahead and give us some information about um, Chewy mean, Gutierrez. You man. know, Chewy Gutierrez, 12 and 0, four KOs, Las Vegas is on. Uh, the boy got, a, like you said, an amazing entourage behind him. He got one of the best local followings you could ever hope for when you try to go pro in boxing, mm -hmm. especially out here. Because mm -hmm. they don't really cling on to you. But, you know, that's good. The Mexicans, you know, this, uh, the Mexican community really support him real yeah. well. So it's easy, man. He just make it happen. He do what he do. He had a pretty good amateur career. I think he had 16 amateur fights, and he lost his last one. Then he said, to hell with it, man. Let's go pro. He been smooth sailing ever since. Wow. And, and that's a trip. You said he has 16 amateur fights. I notice a lot of fighters, especially out here in Vegas, yeah. a lot of fighters are doing that. They turn him pro quick. Real quick. Forget about the 100 or 300 <laughs> amateur fights. They ready to make that money and, yeah. and, and well, do it, know, right? They got the, he got the big bros Floyd out here making all the money. That's what they looking at. So they like, man, the hell with all this free fighting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> Let's start getting paid. But, you know, a long amateur career is important to a boxer, man. It's important. To me, I would suggest you have at least 40 or 50 of them before you step out. Yeah. But that's my opinion. I agree. But, you know, who am I? Now, it, 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 it's funny, it's funny, Ranger. You say you agree. I was just about to ask you, what did you think about that, man? Um, how many fights you well, think um, a, 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 a fighter should have before he steps up to the pros? Well, you know, it, 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 that's kind of like a tricky question for me, being from Cuba, where, where fighters are used to having, you know, 300, 450 amateur fights. But, at the, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're no longer in Cuba. And here I would love to see them at least, with what you just said, at least 40 to 50 fights. Yeah, Why? yeah I agree. We can use the, uh, the, the, the perfect example on Peter uh, Kid Chocolate Quilling, who had 15 amateur fights before he turned pro. Mm -hmm. uh, although he's yeah. been successful in his professional career, we have seen that up to his last fight, he's still in a learning process, meaning that he's not a complete, although he's a champion, and he deserves all the respect for being a champion, oh, even yeah. though he doesn't know everything there is about technicalities in boxing, 
uh, you can still see that he's still learning, learning a lot due to the fact of his short amateur career, you know? Yeah, abso absolutely. And, you know, I, I kind of look at it as um, it's equivalent to um, a basketball player going straight from high school to the pros, you know? Mm -hmm. So l let me let me ask you this, Tawan. Uh, now, who is um, Jesus Gutierrez's um, opponent? Do you know about him or anything? Um, his name is Pablo Becerra. I think I'm saying it right. I don't want to mess up Becerra. I thought it was like Becerra. Yeah, yeah but Becerra. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a guy he can't overlook. You know, he's 7-4. and four. Regardless of that, them seven wins, he got six knockouts with him. Yeah. So we can't overlook him by far. You know, Chewie going to come out. He's going to do what he do. And uh, he ain't fought in like a year and a half, so I know he's anxious to get back into the ring. I'm, I want to see a good fight, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, now, Tawan, I understand that originally he was going to fight an undefeated guy by the yes. name of Don Moore, yes. right? Yes, yes, good tell me, Don. <laughs> tell me what happened with Donnie, man. <laughs> I mean, I, didn't, I never got to really speak with him directly. I went through his management, you know what I mean? And uh, it was a go. You know, everybody agreed on the numbers, and we was going to fight. We was going to start promoting it, but, you know, the closer it got – uh, it was uh, Don want this, he want this, or now his shoulder ain't feeling good. I mean, I'm not knocking Don. Don, if you're watching, you're a hell of a fighter. I'm not knocking <laughs> you. But, you know, it was, you know, his management kept saying, nah, man, we ain't going to do it. He ain't going to do it. He ain't doing this. He ain't doing this. And I said, man, all right, whatever. We got to keep it rolling. Yeah. I would have loved to have 12 and 0 versus 17 and 0. Yeah. That's TV course, fight all day long. Oh, I would love to have that. But, that. you know, but, you know, to the powers may be, I ain't had no control over that. So, me being Chewy's fight promoter. I went. We made the next, uh, the next best move happen. Seven to four, six knockouts is gonna be a good fight. May thirty first, six p.m. <laughs> the doors open. Uh, Eight o'clock. Hey, Zeus Gutierrez is fighting this our city. Everybody come out and represent with us. RHP. Now that's what it is. Right Hook Promotions is in the building, guys. The future. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we see some new faces because um, you know, we see Bob Arum a little too much. We see <laughs> we see Golden Boy a little too much. I mean, <laughs> man, I'm tired of Bob Arum. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, not me, man. I I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of the sport. Yeah. So I'm always having fight parties at my house. I don't care who fighting. I, I, I like watching fights. So Bob Arum. Well, I'll tell you what, man, man. I'll tell you what. I, I, a lot of us, you know, misuse the term nobody sometimes you know uh oh this do nobody because he got seven fights four losses or whatever whatnot but but we also got to go back in boxing history and look at you know what has happened to some of the uh prospects that should have been by now a big name like like jorge maromero paez uh jr who got knocked out by a guy that had more losses than victories uh and then on the rematch he lost to him again i believe uh uh so you can't ever, you know, I don't think Chewie should take this guy lightly, no. being the fact especially that we don't really know the guy. We don't really know what his fighting style is. So, right, right. you know, uh, uh, Chewie should, should really uh, uh, not take the guy lightly. I don't think you should take any opponent lightly because no. he has two hands just like you. Just like one him. punch Absolutely. can't yeah, right. end it all. Yeah. One punch can't end it all. Right. And that's why Chewie, he goes hard every day in the gym. He training for the future. Everybody else, you know, he looking at them like they in his way, but we ain't overlooking nobody because everybody want that big shot. Chewy, a local favorite here. Yeah, he would love to put that on his resume yeah. to do something with my boy or put him out or beat him or whatever. Yeah, Chewy ain't gonna let it happen. Yeah. But Pablo over there thinking about it. He, he thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, he thinking about it. But, <laughs> you know, it's all good. It, you know, hopefully it's going to be a good fight. I see Chewy coming out on top. I don't have a biased opinion. I'm a fan of boxing. Uh, so I see Chewy coming out on top. But you never know what this guy going to bring. Like I said, he ain't fought in the last year and a half, two years. So you never know. He might come ready like, man, I'm coming to get this money, beat the local boy, and come back. You never uh -huh. know what type of mentality he going to be. <laughs> Uh, you know, so yeah, yeah. I just want him to come fight. Yeah. Come fight. Yeah. At the end of the night, I'm sitting back watching, man. I'm uh, enjoying fights like the rest of them in the building. Yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> hey, Tuan, were you surprised how successful you've been so far with, like I said, packing the house when it comes to you promoting these little local events, man? Well, well the, the local events, I don't promote. I promote my fighter. Okay, okay. And that's the, you know, that's the big difference. I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the big difference. I promote my fighter. Now, me promoting my fighter Better promotes right. the show. <laughs> if me promoting my fighter promotes the show, then so be it. Yeah. I can't help that. Yeah. I just go over and beyond for my fighters. Yeah. yeah. I like promoting them, putting them out there, getting them to the people. Because at the end of the day, when you do what you do, you want to be known for doing what you do. Absolutely. Speaking of being hey, known. Kawhi. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ranger. <laughs> okay, I was I was just gonna say if you keep that mentality, you'll never be on one of my videos. Uh, 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 as far as me talking bad about you, because <laughs> I don't dog, you know I don't I, you know I don't dog, thank you man. I don't dog already, uh, Bob Aaron, uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoy. I just can't stand 
in a D motor. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Like when you talk about um, um, Bob Aaron uh, demoting Guillermo Rigano, as long as yeah. you stick for your fighter, which is what you're supposed to do, man. Right, exactly. Uh, and, you, and you and you keep that hunger with your fighter, man. I don't see why 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 shouldn't you get successful at this game? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, well, I appreciate that, man. I really do. You've been in the game and have a successful YouTube channel. That means a lot coming from you, bro. And I, I really appreciate that. But uh, we're right, just man. putting, uh, you know, one foot in front of the other, man. Making moves happen. Slow motion is better one than no motion. One day at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Ranger just brought up a good subject. We're going to talk more about that demoting uh, Guillermo Rigondi out in a minute. But let me let me ask you um, this um, as well. Now, we've seen Guillermo Rigondeau uh, fight for a title with 11 fights. We've right. seen Lomachenko try to, you know, to, to, be, to basically, you know, mat, uh, match uh, Guillermo Rigondeau by doing it with two fights, right? But he wasn't that successful. When it comes to Chuy Gutierrez, how fast do you want to move him up in the rankings when it comes to fighting for a title? I mean, you know, a slow process is a for show process. So, <laughs> for show. Sure. Exactly. So we don't want to rush nothing. You know, uh, everything, you know, everything take uh, time. You know, you can't you can't put a rose in the oven and then be done in 20 minutes. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be bloody. It ain't going <laughs> to write. The season ain't going to set in. Yeah, you know, yeah. and at the end of the day, when you put the rose on the table, you want the presentation to look good. Yeah, man. You see man. what I'm saying? So now, Amen. so that's where we at. I heard that. You know, we're going to take it as slow as we need to, but we will take step up fights in the future. You know, everything's a chess game. You got to plan everything when you start a business. Everything. I heard that. It, it, it makes sense to me. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the promotional beefs in the boxing community right now, Tawan. Now, like I said, we know that Top Rank and Golden Boy, they haven't been working with each other forever. Yeah. And it's hurting the sport, man, because it there's is. so many good fights that could be made. Yeah. You know, when I think of the fights that could be made, I'm like, man, right? Yeah. So I, I want to ask you, man, what do you think about that beef? And what do you think could be done for them to possibly make amends? You know what? Honestly... I ain't got no sure inside or nothing. I'm just speaking on being a fan. And now that I'm on the business side, how I look at it, I think it's really just petty. I think they all came in the game together. Everybody was with Bob Aaron, Floyd, De La Hoya. There's probably some bitter feelings in there. And everybody got enough money to be like, I don't need $100 million to mess with you. I'm straight. Yeah, I think yeah. it's more personal than just business. I think they want to prove, like, I don't need you. We all right. Well, I don't yeah. need you either. So, oh, well, the hell with you. More, so I think it's crazy. Yeah, it is. I'd have been said, let's sit down and get some money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd have been said it. I'd have been said it. That's, but, I mean, you know, that's on them. That, Anybody can walk around, pack out Floyd, that's a $100 million fight. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy. A piece for both of them. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. So well, for, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, not, not anymore. Okay. Yeah, not okay, anymore. five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah, five years ago, <laughs> yeah. we'd have been a $100 piece. Yeah. But Today, it's like... 40 million or less for Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I mean. Pacquiao better get his EBT to get his life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But to walk for away, real. to walk away from that much money on the table, it shows that one, we got enough money. We ain't tripping on a hundred million or two. I don't care about you. Oh, well, I don't need you. I'm better <laughs> than you. And they leave it at that. It will, well, go ahead. The Raven. one thing Pacquiao, the one thing Pacquiao probably didn't count she was that that yeah for Sam, but and nevertheless, I'm I'm gonna tell you one thing that raises a lot of questions. And I know this has probably been clarified, but not, I not okay. me as a boxing fan, me as uh, me as as a uh, fighter up to an extent, I'm just, with this point of view, if Bob Aaron has never ever put a lot of money compared to Floyd Money, and y'all call me on the phone. I mean, you know, take the fight, and I'm going to wire you $20 million into the fight. And I turn that down, there's uh, something that goes beyond just the business aspect of fights. Yeah, uh, I've I always agree. said uh, that uh, there was something running through them veins. But nevertheless, let's not get into that because that's, uh, that's, that's old conversation. Moving to, the, to, the, to, to, to where we at now, look at Pacquiao. You know, Pacquiao now, even if he says tomorrow, even if they both agree to fight tomorrow, the, the fight will probably still not happen because Floyd, as a businessman, is probably going to say, uh, you know what, Pacquiao, I know I offered you $20 million, but guess what, my brother? You're really just a $5 million fighter. Yeah. And Pacquiao, I know, is not going to take that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well I mean, but at the end of the day, as I've heard Floyd say on interviews plenty of times that uh, Pacquiao need him. 
So well, he might take whatever he offer. It, I think it's. I believe it's damn sure going to be more than what Bob would pay him. Oh, of course, of but, course. I mean, you know. Do you agree with Floyd when he says that Pacquiao needs him more than Floyd needs him? I agree. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. I agree. Man. I agree because right now Floyd is that draw. He's the Super Bowl of boxing. The world tuned I mean, in think when he about stepped it. out. Well, mm -hmm. You know, so Floyd's Mayweather worst pay per view numbers in the last five years. I think uh how many pay per view sales it was like eight hundred thousand like Yeah, this last fight with uh Maidana, I said I think I read somewhere they said it was eight hundred and seventy five thousand. You talking about the pay per views? Yeah. Yeah, they they talking about that. I don't know if that's a rumor yet. I'm I'm waiting to, to see if it's official. All I know if, if it is eight hundred fifty, you know, compared to of course previous uh pay per views. It's obviously not that much of a success, but for Floyd Mayweather, right. with his name being Money Mayweather, he's guaranteed to make at least sixty to seventy million dollars for that one fight. Right. When when Manny Pacquiao, in contrast, they uh, I've heard that he's already got a guaranteed six million against Bradley, and then he's supposed to get the rest of that in increments, mm -hmm. going up to like fifteen to twenty. So in contrast, Which he probably never gets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I don't even understand why would if you off if you guaranteed twenty million. Why would you get six million up front and then get another, you know, the rest of it later on when when you got Floyd Mayweather getting thirty two million dollars up front? So, um, like I said, just to make the contrast, once again, if you're comparing Manny Pacquiao to Floyd Mayweather, it makes May Mayweather look better money wise, but pay per view wise, you know, it will be a little bit of a disappointment if Mayweather didn't crack at least a million pay per view buys, right. considering that he had Amir Khan and Adrian Broner. On the um, undercard, so you know. I tell you what, though. I tell you what. Whatever the pay-per-view numbers was in this fight, I can guarantee you, he'll go back over a million on his next fight. Now that people think that he quote unquote lost his fight, right? Or, sure or at least almost wanna... lost. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I think I, that I'm extra. Sure they're gonna want to see what happens next time. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they don't realize that 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 Floyd. I mean, I'm sometimes I think, man, I. I Ain't Floyd tired of playing with, with people, you know, because, like, Floyd can manage boxing however he wants. You know, one day he'll give you a good fight, make you think he's downhill, and next day here you are buying a pay-per-view just to see him lose, and then he disappoints you again. And at the end of the day, they don't realize the type of fighter Floyd is. Uh, yes, Maidana had a good run, right, uh, along with all the things that he was allowed to do during that fight. But at the end of the day, man... <laughs> That O never went away. <laughs> straight well, up. <laughs> you, but you know what? And just on some straight boxing talk, the double standards, you know, of course, irritate me. Because when Floyd Mayweather is dominating and beating people easy and making it look very easy, then you got the detractors saying, oh, well, see, he's winning, but he's boring. Yeah. And it's this and he's that. He doesn't want to take any risk, any chances, right? right, right. Then as soon as he gets in the ring with someone like Mike Donna, and it's a toe-to-toe -to -toe going back and forth. He's yeah. giving people what they want. Now they want to say, oh, aha, see, you're not perfect, Floyd. You yeah. was getting hit a lot. Yeah. And this and that. He's not as good as he claims to be. Right. right? Can't, he can't win for losing. He can't win He said he losing. chose to sit there and do that. He yeah. was going to give the people what they was paying for. Yeah. I paid my $75. I was satisfied. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> it was, was a good well, fight. It was a real good fight. Yeah. He pulled people it out. People want to act. People want to act like Floyd did not warn us about that. And if we remember Floyd, a week before the fight, he was saying it in the press. Hey, uh, uh, I mean, a week before the fight, he was saying it. Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a fight. So like, it ain't like he was talking all that trash and then all of a sudden got shocked by, by yeah. the way that the fight happened. He was already warning us of what what was going to take place during this fight. Yeah. And I tell you what, uh, uh, what really irritates me. Uh, when fans, uh, or forget the fans, because I've always said in my video, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people, I don't know if they can't stand me or they don't like the way I say some things, but forget the fans. I can't stand when a trainer that has requests and has cried about being trainer of the year before, like Robert Garcia, he talking about, oh, we didn't win because we didn't use our gloves. So you mean to tell me that your fighter is limited to a certain pair of gloves? Yeah. Are you seriously are you seriously gonna sit here and tell me as a professional trainer that the only way your fighter can win <laughs> is with an illegal 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was crazy. And, and you, you brought up a good point, Ranger. Was I mean, crazy. wasn't that stupid? That I mean, was crazy. And, and you know, and this is another thing. And, and I meant we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> My Donna at the press conference. I've been noticing the transformation. My Donna used to be a nice, humble guy. He used to be a quiet, oh, talk trash humble. Now. now all of a sudden, he talking like you know he gang banging on Mayweather, and <laughs> and you know Floyd Mayweather is talking all nice to My Donna at the post fight conference, and you know really you know giving him respect talking about his family being a beautiful family etc cetera, etc cetera. and my daughter comes back by saying oh well let me wear my gloves next time let's you know let me wear my gloves next time like you just said it's like he's making that admission that he needs special gloves to have a chance yeah. against Mayweather it's right. no it's no different than my daughter said well if, if we gonna race Hussein Bolt give me a five second he head start next time yeah. let's see if you're gonna do that yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's real. real I talk. mean, yeah, right? Real talk. Yeah, I agree 100%. But I think that that could be him hanging out with Robert Garcia and the gang over there because um, I, I don't know if that has something to do with my Donna and his newfound um, personality or behavior that um, we've been seeing um, lately, man. But, yeah, man. man let me, uh, let's go back to this subject, man, that really, you know, that really got a lot of fans talking that's promotional beef this whole war that, that needs <laughs> yeah. to come to we, an yeah. end we got to get back to you that. know what i mean yeah it do uh, need to know, end I, I, I agree I, I, me as a boxing fan man uh, uh i really need this war to be done because i'm sick and tired of people coming to my videos and telling me all oh, rangers such and such fight can't happen because in case you didn't know golden boy promotion and and, and top rank can't can't work together mm -hmm. and my question is why at mm -hmm. the end of the day they're here for the fighters. They ain't here for their egos. Right. I mean, the at, at the end of the day, it's not going to be Golden. Uh, it's not going to be Oscar and Bob Aaron inside the ring. Yeah. So why not just, yeah. you know, at just the end work, of the man. Day, just, yeah. just get this fight. Bro, yeah. I look at it like at the end of the day, man, it's a business. And to keep a successful business, you have to give the people what they want. Well, but let, sure. You have to. It's like me cutting hair. If somebody come in and this brother right here want a ball fade, I can't give him no bowl cut. Yeah, I, that's what I felt like doing. Because that's what you want to do. I gotta give you what you paying what he, me what, for. What he asked for. It'd be like me, right? Exactly. It'd be like me walking into your shop, man. I I I want some tape, and he said, Nah, I don't I don't cut your type of hair. It's like, wait a minute. I, I thought you here to cut hair. Exactly. It's like I thought you here to promote a fight. Why ain't you promoting this fight? Exactly. Why Why are we getting this fight? You know right. what I mean? And and man, really good fights. I mean, yep. I, I sit here. And, we and missing I, out on I, a lot. You know, it's exactly. We're just missing out on a lot, man. Yeah, we Period. are. As boxing fans, we deprived. Yeah, we deprived. We are deprived. Now, but speaking of that, now Tawan and Ranger, now Richard Schaefer, he's got a little bit of a beef right now with Oscar De La Hoya because this is interesting. Oscar actually wants to work with um, Top Rank. He wants to put on fights like Canelo versus Pacquiao. Beautiful. Richard Schaefer, he's saying, no, nah, man, we have morals. I don't want to work with this guy. Look, I mean, he called Floyd Mayweather Hitler. I mean, he tried to ban, he tried to boycott Mayweather versus Maidana and this and that. I mean, does he have some good points, Ranger? He does have some good points when it comes to uh, uh, a sentimental side or aspect of this beef. Uh but when you come down and sit as business, when you come to talk numbers, you got to look at what type of numbers can you generate against an enemy uh, a promotion company. Because yeah. at the end of the day, when the dollars come into your bank account, they ain't going to be fighting each other. They're going to be sitting there together. Together. Like yeah. good little pieces of paper. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, shoot, very good point. And, and another thing is, if anything, this might be hurting Bob Arum. If Bob Arum wants to have all of the money and he has to give up some of the money, you could even look at it that way. This might even be hurting him that he has to share some of the money. I mean, there just has to be a way for these promoters to work together because we are missing out on some fantastic fights. And, um, you know, they, they, need to, they need to work together. I got I to gotta say, man, even though I don't agree with a lot of stuff that Bob Arum has done, I got to side, honestly, with, with Bob Arum. I mean, I'm sorry, with Oscar De La Hoya a little bit because I believe or I agree with Oscar De La Hoya it's better to work with, go, with um, Bob Arum in top rank than to not work with him and just be, you know, fighting against opponents that fans don't want to see them fight against. Mm -hmm and see the real fight. So this could be more like the UFC, where the UFC, they're always fighting against the best competition. And and man. it should be like that in boxing, man. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you know, and at the end of the day, um, top rank needs 
this this unity. Uh, top rank is um, a sinking ship, and at you know a, as the storm clouds of this com- company's destruction is gathering, man, they they need they need they need to do something because they losing they getting sued by their fighters, they losing fighters, and if you look at top rank's cards, really and truly, they a joke. I mean, uh, uh, they need, imagine now if we could, if we was able to have. You know, these two companies come together. The world would buy their first pay per view event just to see. Just to what see. What that yep, fight yep. And there go three just million buys. Yeah. Exactly. That's just, that's just to see, man. It's not even to, because to, you know what's going It's just to sit and see mm-hmm. what's going to happen, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I ain't trying to preach or nothing. I'm no, just hey, talking preach, like brother, a brother. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> it's all talk radio, baby. Yeah, yeah. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah, this is what we do. The only hour to do it, you know. <laughs> but no, and, and I was gonna say, uh, we got Eric over here, um, our additional producer. If you got any, um, you know, anything you want to throw in, go ahead, because he's a boxing fan as well. Hey, I know we were talking outside about the uh, Chris Ariola fight. Versus the new <laughs> WBC heavyweight champion of the world. From First Jamaican born. Haitian, Haitian born. Berman. Yeah, Haitian, it's yeah. Berman, not Bermain. <laughs> Stavern. That's right. That's right. What, what did you think about that, Eric? What did you think about his performance? I thought it was a good fight. Um, Ariola had the first few rounds, and uh, everybody thought Ariola was going to become uh, the first Mexican American heavyweight champion ever. But uh, I think Berman St- uh, Stavern was uh, playing a little possum on the ropes there, took some shots. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. Uh, he was never really hurt, like he said. And then he was always uh, cocking that. Uh, his arms were down a little bit, waiting for the big shot, and uh, finally he got it. In the first fight, he, uh, you know, he broke uh, his nose. Chris Ariola's nose. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man, Ariola did not look good after that fight. No. <laughs> No, he didn't. He's what I want to know is this. What I want to know is this. Were these the two best heavyweights in the world by the WBC for this fight? For the green nope. belt that no, Muhammad Ali wore, that Mike Tyson wore, that Lennox Lewis wore. Were these the two best guys they could find for the fight? And let me tell you this. It was free. It was on ESPN for free. You didn't have to fork out $75 for this fight. A lot of people wanted to see this fight for free. Yeah. They finally saw it. But is Berman Steve was the, Berman the best fighter in the world? Go ahead, go ahead Roger. It wasn't the best two fighter in the world. However, Berman was the right fighter for this belt. Uh, Berman has shown that he has the skills. He's been working hard. He's taking a container, a, a contender, as Chris Arrilla was. He's taking him out in the past. And I think the heavyweight division is ready for a new champ. I mean, aren't you tired of hearing the Klitschko but name? Yeah. Seriously, let's yeah. be real. Yeah. Aren't, aren't you tired of seeing the Klitschko fight somebody from Kazakhstan that we don't even know? Aren't you tired of, 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 of I mean, Germany. I know the heavyweight division. Exactly. You know, I, I'm ready for a new name, man. No, absolutely. And, and, and yeah, like I said, it's refreshing to see new names. It's, it's refreshing to see somewhat of a new era in the heavyweight Besides, division. Besides, man, but, history, history. And was I don't, created first Asian born uh, heavyweight champion of the world. Ranger, I you don't know? want to see a heavyweight championship at noon on a Saturday between <laughs> Vitaly Klitschko and some other guy I've never heard of in the middle of Germany. Exactly. In the middle of exactly. Germany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he he makes a good point. He knows his stuff. <laughs> he knows his stuff. I want to see the uh, best American heavyweights come back. Are there any good American heavyweights? Well, we do have. You know, me personally, and and we'll we'll get everybody's um opinion on this. But me personally, I think right now the best American heavyweight right now is a fighter by the name of Brian Jennings. That's who I have my money yeah. on. I mean, you have Brian Jennings. You have an undefeated guy by the name of Andy Ruiz. You have um, that's my homie right there. Yeah, what up, Andy, Andy Ruiz? Yeah, that's my boy. Oh, we got to get him on the show. We oh, got to yeah. get him on the show. Matter of fact, yeah. And um, we got um, Amir Mansour who just lost to Cunningham, but Amir Khan. I mean, Amir Mansour. He's still the closest thing to Mike Tyson. This dude is a monster. And then you, of course, you have Deontay Wilder, who I like Deontay, Deontay Wilder, but I think he's just a little overrated though because he has 31 wins with 31 knockouts, but he hasn't fought anyone in the top 10 right now. Or, or Brother yeah. needs some work. So, you know, he'll probably work. beat Stavern, 
But you know, before go ahead, Tawan, what tell me no, what I you was think. gonna say he ain't been past the fifth round yet. No, I think so. I would like to see somebody take him in them deep waters. I ain't taking nothing away from him. Yeah, no, I just want to see where that stamina at when it's eighth, ninth round, and you got to dig a little deeper than yeah. the first four rounds. Yeah, he yeah. hell of a fighter though. I mean, anybody thirty-one people, I don't care who you fight. Yeah, if I you knock out thirty-one right. people, that says something. I, yeah, that's thirty-one people. That's thirty-one knockouts. That 31 is thirty-one. I, I, I tell you, I, I tell you guys about one name that you probably ain't even heard of, but it's a name you guys got to watch out for because he's been playing in between two weight divisions. He's been, you know, cruiserweight heavyweight, wherever he can find a fight. But I'm sure we're going to see him in the heavyweight either at the end of this year or the beginning of the year. But it's a guy by the name of Junior Dorticos. He's a Cuban fighter, yeah. 16 and 0, 16 knockouts. The kid has skills. He's not just a fat. He's not even fat, first of all. He's just masculine, long, long reach. The kid can jab. He can hook. He can uppercut. He moves. He's got leg movement. The kid is, I'm not saying he's the perfect heavyweight, but I'm just saying he's the closest thing to a very, very excellent heavyweight. And that's one name that we need to really uh, uh, start putting our, our eyes on. Uh, and, and I believe, the, you know, uh, Deontay Wilder, he, 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 can, he can get some work done. And, and uh, honestly speaking, although he still needs a lot of work, I, I, I honestly believe he will dethrone either uh, Bermain, and I b honestly believe he can be the champion of the world. Hell, why not? Yeah, hey, hey, any, anything's possible. Um, Anything is possible. Bermain Stavern, he definitely has a couple holes in his game that he needs to work on. Like I said, it was effective against Areola because Areola is easy to hit. He's, you know, a face first type fighter. So you could back mm -hmm. up on the ropes with him and hit him with counters all day. You won't be able to do that with a guy who's six foot six and has a telephone pole jab. You know, you won't be able to do that. So, um, Ariola um, or uh, Stavern, he's going to have to work on some things if he wants to hold that green belt, which is going to be very, very difficult. Yeah. I'll you... tell you who I want to see Stavern fight, man. Who? I, who? I want to see Stavern just knock the hell out of the ridiculous, overrated Tyson Fury, man. Oh, I can't man. Stand. <laughs> oh, man. That would be a good fight. That would. That... I agree. I agree. I don't know, man, but it's going to yeah. be hard. It's going to be hard. Go ahead, Eric. It's a uh, big height advantage for Tyson Fury there. Yeah. Uh, he's about 6'9". Yeah. That's pretty much what he's got going for him. I know there's been a couple of Russians who are like 6'11 or 7 feet tall that actually Nikolai held Bayou the belt. Of like 7 foot tall. Yeah. yeah, he actually held the belt probably only because he was tall. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Tawan, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, do you think as a, uh, as a sp uh, boxing and entertainment promoter, you can possibly uh, find a great heavyweight for us? Uh, you know, That's heavyweight question. boxing is the essence of boxing. Everybody been waiting for that 200-pound dude to move like Ali. If I find him, I'm getting him. You got to. I would love to jump into it. I'm a fan of the sport, period. So I would love a heavyweight champ. Yeah, a we, light heavyweight champ, a welterweight champ, a lightweight champ, bantamweight champ. There you oh, go. Yeah. The whole, the whole <laughs> All stable. the way down to the bottom. Yeah, the whole stable. But I like I, to get, you know, I like to get, I like to get to one's uh, opinion on, on what does he think, uh, Fifty Cent do? How does how do you honestly speaking, how do you think? 50 cents doing as a promoter and please man be honest please <laughs> please we speak the truth over here too oh yeah 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 you know you definitely speak the truth at all talk radio oh, definitely man. definitely but honestly i keep it real 100 percent. anything 50 cent has stepped in anything he's always been successful whether it's been music headphones uh, ringtones energy drinks what? workout what? plans what? Like, you know, I'm just being honest. No, I don't true. see him making a mistake. He used to box when he was younger and hanging around Floyd all them years, and he's already a businessman. So he probably soaked up a lot of knowledge and went and ran with it. So I think anything he jumps in, he'll be successful as long as he plays his cards right. It, yeah, now, now since we're talking about that, now 50 Cent, like I said, he's been getting a lot of criticism with uh, his fighters sitting on the shelf for so long. You know, Gamboa hasn't had a fight. Um, Andre Durrell hasn't had a fight. A lot of people don't even know he's with 50 Cent. Right. But the question I want to ask you is, do you think this is because of 50 Cent, or is it possibly because maybe when it comes to Gamboa, you have a lot of guys who don't want to fight Gamboa. Right. Like, like, um, like I said, Mikey Garcia, he did everything possible Not to, to avoid this fight. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean it, it does, what, what do you think, Tuan? What, 
I mean, I, mean I, I think it, yeah, 50 Cent is a celebrity in his own. So whatever he's attached to is going to escalate that much more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he signed Gamboa, which was already a force in the boxing world anyway. So his position of power, scooping up somebody like Gamboa from top rank, I thought it was a perfect move. I don't see 50 Cent failing. Once he sit down and focus 100%, because, you know, he's all over the place. He got movies. He got yeah. everything. I think once he put all his eggs in the boxing, which I feel he might do in the next few years, mm -hmm. I think I he'll he be does. right up there. I, I, I hope he doesn't get discouraged because we really do need someone like that. And we already oh, yeah. know whenever oh, yeah. you have a hip hop influence on anything, you know, it becomes huge. <laughs> it becomes it huge, become huge in the sport of boxing. I mean, look at Dr. Dre. He's about to be the first hip hop billionaire. Three point two. Yeah. And and it's only because of the hip hop influence. Right. Exactly. So you put you put the hip hop name on anything, it's gonna help. Yeah, but I, I think he help. just has to get that first Big fight like Gamboa versus Mikey Garcia. I think that, that would have got fight. him his foot in the door. Yeah, that was but a big fight. He, he definitely got enough money. Oh, yeah. He yeah. definitely got enough bread to play the game. Yeah. But I think uh, he'll be all right, man. Once he focuses 100% on boxing, he'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just don't want him to get um, discouraged. But let me ask you this, Tawan. Yes, sir. So we're talking about promotion, um, you know, people being criticized for failing and not doing good. What is the key to be, to reaching that monopoly level that Golden Boy and even DeBella, Don King, and, and Top Rank, what's the key to making it to that level in the promotional Give, world? Giving the people what they want to see. Yeah. Giving the people mm -hmm. what they want to see. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's a business. You have to serve to the people that's supporting your business. Yeah. And once you don't serve them what they want, they go find it elsewhere. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, and people got to realize one thing. You know, they keep telling, they keep talking about, oh, you know, uh, this promoter got to, you know, make sure that the money he's invested in this fighter, you know, that this fighter is able to pay it back with fame. But we then I think of back in the days when Don King was was putting the great fights together. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm sure Don King promoted this fighter and spent some money in them. And I'm sure he made a lot of money out of them. So at the end of the day, I don't think and I might be wrong because, you know, I'm not a promoter. But at the end of the day, just looking on on on, on as far as what history has given given us with other promotional companies. I don't think it's all the fault has to be done with all, you know, we got to take this fighter and blow him up fighting 45 nobodies and, and, <laughs> and then uh, uh, and then give him a, a good exposure because of the money we spent. I think, going back to 50 Cent, again, I, I'm going to act like a little bit like, uh, I hate to say this, I don't, I don't want to act like Skip Bayless here, but uh, uh, <laughs> uh, going Skip back is, to Skip Cent, is good for the show. Skip is always good for the show. You need hot and cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, Real you know, cold. <laughs> Gam Gamboa, Gamboa is not the only fighter with. So we could we could argue if Gamboa was the only fighter. Oh, you know what? Other fighters just don't want to fight him. It ain't fifty cents fault. But what about your other fighters? There ain't nobody seen him fight other than Curtis since the day you signed him. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, I've seen a few of his fighters fight on ESPN Friday Night Fights. I think he did like two or three of them out there in Connecticut. So I got to I got to see a little bit of his stable. I've been down to his gym a few times, so I got to see some of his up and coming prospects work, you know, sparring and whatnot. So I mean, you know, fifty gonna be all right. I believe I, he'll be all right. I, I really hope so. Like I said, I hope I, I hope so. Yeah, I, I don't want him to get discouraged because we like like I said once again, just to reiterate, we really need someone like that with like a hip hop type of influence towards the sport. It goes hand in hand. Oh yeah. So that's my background, actually. Uh, music. Is it? Oh yeah. Okay. I, I approach this game like that game. Yeah. Only thing difference is they actually pay for this. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You gotta find some kind yeah. of way to Canelo, pay for it, right? Canelo versus Lara. Canelo versus Lara. Canelo that's versus Lara. I think Lara is gonna do what he did to Angulo for a while, box and move, box to move, stay mobile, but when Canelo get them feet planting that corner, it's over. You think so? So, so you picking? So you picking Canelo to I stop? I think Canelo him. gonna get him. I think Canelo <laughs> gonna get him. I mean, oh, honestly, oh, I mean, Laura's yeah. a good fighter. He's a good yeah, fighter. Yeah, Laura's yeah. a good fighter. Yeah, but yeah. Canelo's a good fighter also. Yeah, and yeah. I just think he has to box. He can't bang with Canelo. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he can go I mean, all Dante, out with Canelo. Dante, you know you gotta let me fight go, him for at, the So, so let, let me go on and jump in on this one. <laughs> <laughs> now I just uh, believe okay, that he's gonna like, box and run, look, box and move, what? <laughs> and Canelo gonna catch him just like Angulo a caught people, him. Angulo would have knocked him off had for he not sure. hit that head. But uh, I, don't, sure. I don't know about that. I I don't know about that. I mean, like I said once again, I think we underestimate. 
people's chin when they get knocked down. You know, I mean, I once I think that Laura has a terrific chin. If you look at how he got knocked down against Angulo with that hook, the way he hit the ground, it looked like it was over. And, and, and all of a sudden, he should have been asleep. Yeah. yeah, all of a sudden he just jumped back up like he like he slipped. You yeah. know what I mean? So and continued to beat Angulo to the punch. And continued yeah, to and beat continue. him up. He, I mean, you got to think about it. Uh, Laura, he won almost every single round that he didn't get knocked out in. Yeah. No, I mean, knocked Not, down yeah. in. Excuse me. Right. But the thing is, we need to know what's going to happen when Canelo gets knocked down. What is he going to do? Is he going to be able to just jump right back up like that? You know, I mean, that's the question, right? That's what we paying our that's, 65 that's, 95 that's for. We, we got to see. <laughs> Now, here, we to see what's going to happen. Yeah, let me put, let me put my two cents in this fight. Let me, let me put Go my ahead, two Ranger. cents in this fight because, because when I look at Canelo, I look at Oscar De La Hoya, period. Yeah, so man. let me go on and say this for the record. You know, I mean, I, I don't say it a thousand times on my videos, but let me go on and say it here at alltalkradio.net. Uh, Canelo, I've never said he's a bad fighter. Matter of fact, he was. He's, and, I, and I can still say he is one of my favorite fighters because he's young, he's talented, he's good for the sport. He continues to improve. But when I look at Laura, first of all, who has Canelo fought than Laura that, that, that can offer him the same style of, of boxing skills and power combined than Lara? Not Trout. Trout's a good boxer, but he doesn't possess a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Now, let's turn the card around. Who has Lara fought that offers the tenacity, power, and pressure that Canelo has to offer. Let me count. Paul Williams, who had more more pressure, Good more point. stamina, more power than Canelo. Uh, I believe Angulo can apply more pressure than Canelo. Canelo is never going to fight the way Angulo fights. Because if he does, by the fourth round, he's going to throw in the towel. Out. He'll be gassed out. Or he'll get hurt. Period. Not only that, what's going to happen when... See, we got to look at the, uh, one... Very important thing here. When it comes to the technical aspect of boxing, in my opinion, and, and, and it's not because I'm Cuban, this is something that you can look at and analyze whether you're Jamaican or Chinese or Cantonese. In my opinion, right. technically sounded, uh, Lara is a better technical boxer. So what's going to happen is once Canelo starts getting dominated on the technical aspect of it, he's going to have two things to do one he's gonna have to start applying pressure and if he comes forward that's gonna force him to fight a fight that he's not really used to fighting canelo is not a come forward brawler mm -hmm. canelo is a boxer puncher who likes to sit on his leg wait for you mm -hmm. to make the mistakes to counter punch him so when he realizes that he can't outbox lara he's gonna have to go get lara yeah. so what's gonna happen when he steps out of his element and now erislam de lara is gonna still fight in his own element which is the counter punching aspect move, yeah I, I think he's gonna i don't think and again boxing is anything can happen in boxing anything. but anything. um i just don't see i don't see canelo winning this fight period uh, and and is the same thing that i argue thousands of times against the public when i did my prediction and dante you were part of that with me you know when i did my prediction when it came to nonito and rico oh yeah they were talking oh, about yeah. nonito just blowing people's heads off. everybody had and gone I, there winning that fight they said exactly, Rigo and wasn't I, and ready, didn't have experience exactly. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i said i said rick and dad was gonna do something you pick rico on that oh, one yeah yeah i'm not even saying that because we right here on all talk Radio. <laughs> I, i'm not saying that just, i really thought rick and dad was gonna beat him yeah and i think yeah. that's why bob is demoting him yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Because yeah. of what he did yeah. to his future Pacquiao Filipino exactly. star. Exactly. He was pissed and off. And just to clarify something, this fight is not about honor, like Canelo is saying. You know, he keeps saying, oh, I didn't choose this fight for the belt because this is about my honor. It's not about your honor. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard the radio interview in Mexico that Canelo did where they asked him what led to fight Lara, he said, well, this is the fight I've been wanting for a year and a half. And all I could do was just say, what? What? He did not you say know? that. Oh, yes, he did. Man, I'm trying. Look, when I heard that, I seriously called Arab King, and, 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 and I had to talk to him about it because wow. I could not believe I was hearing that coming out wow. of that kid's mouth. This fight is not about honor. This fight is about social media pressure. Yeah. When Erislandi Lara 
got up there and ruined it for him. Yep. He said right then and there, this ain't how we make fights. You got to wait. And then something happened to him that he wasn't used to. He got the whole world calling him a coward. I mean, after all, the same technique works for Mosley when he got out there and, 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 and uh, interrupted Mayweather. Yeah. Right? Damn. And I knew, if you go back to my video, I knew that this was going to happen. Right. Because pride, pride is a double-edged sword, man. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. Most definitely. 15 minutes into the hour, or 50 minutes into the hour. Now, let, let me say, let me just say this real quick. A whole lot to talk about. Now, one thing, if, if Canelo said that he wanted this fight for a year, obviously the biggest question is why would he say to Laura in his face, nobody wants to see that fight? You, you exactly. know, wait, wait, wait in line. I mean, we can, we, can, we can expose the contradictions all day. But let me go. Let me. There's a little bit of um, background noise going on, and um, uh, um, Rangers is letting you know. But anyway, um, let's just go ahead and talk about the fight real quick. Canelo has never faced a natural 154 pounder in his own division, not in his prime. The only guy he fought was Angulo, and we all know that Angulo he didn't even have a post that night. So my whole thing is. Canelo has never really fought a guy at 154 who's going to rehydrate the same weight and a guy who can box, move around the ring. The only chance I really see um, Canelo even winning this fight is by one-punch knockout. Now, I, it, and then again, who has he knocked out that's a, 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 a natural 154-pounder? Who? Who has he knocked out zero. that is a natural at his yeah, weight division? Make zero. Make he, he, he hasn't really hurt or knocked out anyone. I did a video where I went to the Mayweather gym and got predictions at the Mayweather gym, and it surprised a lot of my viewers because I think I asked eight or nine people, and all of them were picking Canelo to win the fight. Now, one person picked Laura to win the fight. So <laughs> I, mean, I really think Canelo is going to get him. That's yeah. just my opinion. No, it's going to no, be a good yeah. fight. It's going to be a damn good Please fight. Please pick your opinion. No, yeah, it's nah, all good. It's, it's going to be good. a good fight. I'm yeah. spending my money having a fight party to watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a good fight, but uh, I think Canelo going to pull it out, man. I think he's a little bit stronger. No, oh, okay. I mean, like I said, man, it is a competitive saying, fight. Though, man. Me personally, I think it's almost a 50 50 fight. And the reason why I say that is only because I am wondering. Can Canelo land that lucky punch? It, you know, because usually when if someone just has a puncher's chance, then that's almost a 90 to 10 percent chance of, or you know, a 10 percent chance of the guy with the one punch power to win. But in this situation right here, I truly believe that um, Canelo he has a he has a decent chance to land a punch. But I'm leaning slightly towards Lara to to possibly outbox him and make it very easy. This fight kind of reminds me of De La Hoya versus Ike Corte. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Is is because of the fact that Canelo is supposed to be the new Oscar De La Hoya, and. Um, Coincidentally, I don't know if you've seen the the press conference, um, Ranger, but that's what. Uh, but uh, but Laura, he's comparing it to the Trinidad De La Hoya fight because he said, for sure, yeah, he said in the Puerto Rican um, uh, press conference that I'm gonna beat uh, Canelo just like Trinidad beat De La Hoya. So w we'll see, right, Ranger? I'm picking I'm picking Eris de Lara, you know, by unanimous decision. But on the on the on the road to the unanimous decision. We're going to see Canelo with, with a face that, that we have not seen him in the past. We're going to see a lot of blood dripping. And it's not the same getting hit by somebody who is so much smaller than you, like a Josecito Lopez, Carlos yeah. Baldemir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, it's not the same getting hit by uh, Austin Trout, who does not possess a lot of... It's not the same getting hit you know, by those guys. Then getting hit by somebody who is natural at your weight division, possesses decent power, and nevertheless uh, is a southpaw and also is an excellent boxer. Yeah. So I'm going to pick Lara, unanimous decision, and he's going to hurt Canelo as well. All right, just real quick. Let's just throw it in real quick. We only have a couple minutes left. I just want to get your quick thoughts, both of you guys or everybody, on Gamboa versus Terrence Crawford. What do you think, Tawan? <laughs> Man. Tough one, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Gamboa, he's a good fighter, but he hasn't looked as good as he used to look his last two outings. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, and the little homie is coming up. 
Yeah. So it, it's going to be a good, I'm going to watch it. Like I said, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm going to be, yeah, 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 be right there yeah, watching it. Fans you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The fans, <laughs> the fans is winning on this one. Yeah. But I would like to see Gamboa pull it out only because he was where he was at in his career on the way up before that. What, 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 what he was out? Two years, a year. Who he Gamboa? Yeah, man, it's been so long. I don't even remember. He he been since the, since the Michael Farinas fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even remember when that was. Right, it was exactly. over a year easily. Right. So I would love to see Gamboa pull it out. You know what I mean? But it's gonna be a good test for uh, Crawford too. Yeah. Are, are you familiar? I with think. Go, I uh, think that this is gonna be a hard fight for Gamboa and for Crawford both, but more so for Gamboa, uh, due to the fact of the inactivity which he can only erase that out of his body by doing extensive sparring sections the way Mayweather used to do that. Uh, uh, if we think of Mayweather, who used to take a year off, and the last time Gamboa fought was a year off against Darley's Pettis. So I think it's going to be a hard fight for both, but more so for Gamboa, because these two fighters are well, pretty, pretty even when it comes to the technical aspect of the game. They both possess power. Uh, but we got Crawford, who gets taller, longer reach, and I believe the key to victory for Crawford is for keeping the fight on the outside. However, if he's not successful at that, then we have Gamboa, who is a master at mid-range and inside gaming.